the snooker shed. So what are we up to here in the snooker shed today? We've been requested for a video on power. Cheers mate for that video. But first of all, before we look at how we get a good reaction on the ball, we've got to understand what it takes. So what we're going to look at in this first part is technique and timing. So there isn't one single thing in your game that gives you better timing or technique. It's an accumulation of all the things we do before we strike the cue ball. A little recap here on the pre-shot routine. One of the most important things that you need to implement into your game to get this consistent quality timing and technique. So it's a good time to mention that snooker isn't about potting balls. Snooker is about cueing technique. The potting of the balls is a consequence of good delivery of that cue. So here is a couple of videos where I'm hoping that you can track the tip of the cue. And what I want you to notice here is how far that tip travels through the cue ball and beyond the cue ball. And I'm trying to increase that distance all the time. And why do you think I'm increasing that distance? It's all about the technique and the energy that we can put from this tip into that cue ball. That's what's going to give you the power. Have a look at this analogy of a golfer. He's trying to drive it all the way down the fairway and he doesn't do a half swing. He does a full swing all the way back, but he continues that swing all the way forward and back up. That's because he's looking to keep the momentum of the head of his club driving right through the ball. So here's a question I asked two or three years ago when I first started playing, was why is it you have to deliver that cue all the way through? So to answer that question, it's all about momentum and control of the delivery. Let's have a look at this shot where I'm going to try and play screw. I'm going to try and stop the cue for delivering forward. So hopefully you'll see here in this wee video, the disadvantages not given that full delivery. So the first one is the tip doesn't go all the way through the cue ball and that then loses the momentum. Then you've got to look at the cueing to stop the cue from going any further than necessary here in this shot. I'm having to tense up, I'm having to jerk the cue in and hold it tight and that then makes me move on the shot. As soon as I deliver I'm stabbing, I'm jabbing and I'm twitching. And that then is losing that nice momentum and smoothness of the cue. And on top of that, your body's moving on the shot. And that's never a good idea. So now we're going to look at the timing and what timing is. Now, I've seen timing as the amount of time the tip is in contact with the cue ball. And it is minimal, it is fractions. But when I'm playing snooker, what I think of timing is, is the speed of the tip that when it strikes the cue ball. And if I can get the maximum speed on my tip, just as it delivers onto the cue ball, then my timing is normally very good. Have a quick wee look in the card here to one of the greatest coaches in the UK, Barry Stark. And he made a video on timing using slow-mo cameras. Very interesting. So let's look at how I play to try and get that good timing. What you can see here is my hand directly below my elbow, creating a 90 degree angle to the cue. Which means I'm at the pivot point of my backswing and my delivery. When you look at the tip to the cue ball, you'll see it's almost touching. It's really, really close. Now let's look here where I've pulled the cue all the way back. So my hands went as far back as it can comfortably go. And the tip is now almost off the bridge of my hand. Then we'll look at the cue delivered all the way past that 90 degree point straight through 
and passed on the hand stops on the chest. And in this picture, you can see how far that cue and tip is delivered all the way through the cue ball. Now, everybody is slightly different with this because we've all got different techniques, all got different body structures. So your hand might not sit bang on 90 degrees. Some might be slightly forward, some might be slightly back, and it might not make a great deal of difference to your timing. You've got to play around to get that perfect stance for you and your physique. So now that we've got this backswing and delivery in place, let's look at the technique that I've learned to try and get it as good as possible. Hey people, we're back on the snooker shed door and I'm gonna say a big hello to KF McTell from Norwich, 414 miles away. Then I'm gonna say a big hello to Pradip, who's in Chitwan in Nepal, and that's 4,580 miles away. Thank you very much for joining us. And then we're gonna find, where are you? Ian Hallett down there in South London at 450 miles away. One of my favourite accents comes from South London, mate. We should have a chat sometime. So I've hit the pre-shot routine and I'm aiming good and I'm set up well. First thing I want you to pay attention to is the backswing, after the feathers, of course. Look how slow the backswing comes back. It isn't rushed. It's very, very slow and controlled all the way back to the tip. It's the bridge of my hand. Just a little side note on that part. As a beginner, it took me ages to get this developed. And the reason being is because when you pull that cue all the way back, you've got to push it all the way forward. And that distance is increased, which means you increase the chances of cueing a little bit side on the cue ball. So I would advocate at this point just to bring it back slowly, maybe to a half point, and develop that straight cueing technique. So let's have a look now at the delivery itself. So the tip is right back at the bridge. The first thing I want you to notice is how slow the tip takes off before it starts to gain acceleration and move through the cue ball. And that tiny wee part of 50 millimetres or so is so important to the delivery of your cue. If you imagine putting a glass on your dash in the car, if you drive away accelerating full max, the glass is just going to go everywhere. The water inside the glass is going to go everywhere. But if you slowly drive away up to a high speed, that glass will never move. And it's the exact same here. Nice and slow, nice and smooth, and then you could accelerate and drive through. We've looked at what we want the tip to do. We've looked at the nice, smooth delivery, good acceleration, and nice, smooth, controlled cue action. So let's look at how I grip my snooker cue. And everybody grips slightly different. I'm a wee bit different in another way, as I found that to help me straight cueing, I need to twist my grip a little bit. So what I've done, and I've mentioned this on other videos, is I use the chevrons on my cue to give me a good indication of where the cue position is. And if the chevrons are directly under my nose, that's where I want to have them. But now if we have a look at my hand, you'll see that my hand is slightly off center, slightly pushed away from my body. The chevrons are also slightly pushed away to the right hand side. So when I bring the chevrons round to that dead 12 o'clock underneath my nose position, it pushes my elbow slightly in and it brings the cue close to my chest and it also loosens my grip. There is no tension in my hand here. And that's really important because if you have a lot of tension in your hand, then it's going to be more likely that the tip will move offline. I've been practicing this closing of my hand just that wee bit. I've been noticing that if I close it just that wee bit tighter, I get that extra bit of power on the cue ball. And I reckon it's because just at the point of contact on the cue ball, my hand just closes and it gives the tip of the cue that 
extra tiny bit of acceleration just as it impacts. And that's where your professionals, Judd for instance, get so much cue power onto the cue ball. If you think about a closed fist, hard closed fist, think about 25-30% of that is your nice grip for your cue, nice and light. At the beginning of this video, we were asked a question from Pradit from Nepal. Well, hopefully we've answered that using technique and timing. Hitting the ball hard to get power never works. It's all about finesse and skill. And especially on these screw back shots that we see getting played a lot, where you want a good action on the cue ball, so your brain tells you, hit it hard, hit it hard and it's completely wrong. What I want to do is hit it softly with good delivery and hitting it nice and low. And the only way you're going to get that is by hours and hours of practice, unfortunately. I wish I had a magic wand because I'd be on the TV right now, but I don't. It's all about the learning part, which I'm hoping you're getting for this video, that you take and then you practice solidly, constantly working on that technique and timing. Guys, Thank you very much for watching this stuff. Thank you very much for coming along on this journey at the Snooker Shed. It's great to have you all with me. And thank you very much for subscribing and supporting the channel. And I'll see you on the door.